that's the false charge made towards people who are pre-trib, that believe in the pre-tribulation rapture. They'll say, oh, you, these modern Christians just, they don't think God would ever allow them to be persecuted. That has nothing to do with it. I am pre-trib, and I believe the government could come through that door any second and take us off, cart us off to prison. And if I were in China, or Sudan, or Saudi Arabia, or India, or Uzbekistan, or any of the Stan countries, and half the countries in Africa, and half the countries in South America, that happens. Persecution doesn't have anything to do with it. The reason the church isn't here during this time is because it's not about persecution. It's about the wrath of God being poured out on the world. And He's not going to leave His church, His bride, on the earth and pour His wrath out on His bride. The Bible says we have not been appointed to wrath, but to obtain salvation. And just so happens, the bride during this time, the book of Revelation makes it clear, they're in heaven celebrating. Uh, they, they've been at the judgment seat of Christ and received rewards. And then we celebrate the marriage supper of the Lamb. The marriage. So while he's pouring out his wrath on the world, he's not a wife beater beating his bride. He's taken his bride to be with him. And there's been a marriage. And we've enjoyed the marriage supper. And then... We come back with him when he establishes his kingdom at the end of the tribulation. You you look in all these texts and any any of the chapters in Revelation from four to uh, nineteen about the great tribulation, you don't see a church, you don't see the body of Christ, you don't see any Christians. Now uh, over in Isaiah again, chapter thirteen, we're going to see. This day of the Lord, beginning in verse uh, verse six, here he uh, gives us a little more descriptive uh, account of this day. He starts. I mean, look at the first two words in verse six: "How ye." That that means that's. That's the sound that is described when a person has lost a loved one and they grieve. Howl ye, for the day of the Lord is at hand. Again, the day of the Lord is a reference to that tribulation period. It shall come as a destruction from the Almighty. Therefore shall all hands be faint and every man's heart shall melt. Jesus said the men's hearts will uh, fail them for fear. They have heart failure. Verse 8, And they shall be afraid. Pangs and sorrows shall take hold of them. They shall be in pain as a woman that travaileth. They shall be amazed one at another. Their faces shall be as flames. Now we can have the ladies uh, who have had children uh, get up and, and just describe for us what this is like. What was it like having birth pains? And uh, I wouldn't know, but Carol Burnett said, grab your lower lip and stretch it over the top of your head, and you would know what it feels like to give birth to a baby. And that's what he's saying this is going to be like for men. They're going to... Oh, try it. Somebody, Charlie, would you try that? Grab your lower lip and stretch it over the top of your head. See how... Uh, there have been other ways of, of, of describing it I won't get into, but... Um, I am thankful I'm not a woman. Amen? Amen. Amen. <laughs> I cannot imagine having a baby. I can't. God did something special. Because not only do they have a kid, they'll turn around and have another one. And another one. I'm like, you know, isn't once enough? You know, didn't you learn your lesson the first time? But that is just something amazing to me. And... You know, not understanding it fully, but yet having a pretty good idea, at least from accounts, what happens to a woman's body and what she goes through during that time. And everything else in the world takes a back seat. Nothing matters. A woman giving birth doesn't care about the elections. 
she couldn't give a flip about what uh, Britney Spears is doing today. And she doesn't even care who's in concert. And she doesn't care who just left who. And she doesn't want to know, you know, what you had for dinner today. How was your day, honey? She doesn't care. And that's the way it's going to be during the tribulation period. No one's going to care about anything. Their focus is going to be on what's happening here because it is going to be so earth-shaking. It is going to totally... I mean, how many... I mean, kids may remember 9-11. 9-11 was just one of those days where everything took a back seat. You're staring at this on TV, and then the, then the towers come down. And you know thousands, they don't know how many thousands, they were saying tens of thousands at first. Uh, they didn't know so many people had gotten out of the buildings before they collapsed. And you're thinking, it's just numbing. And I remember a couple of days after 9-11, still feeling numb, over what just happened to my country and, and the, the prospects of what could happen next. Where are they going to hit next? We were thinking of dirty nukes, suitcase nukes being left all over the country and all that kind of thing. We still fear that. And our politicians don't have enough brains to close our borders. You know, and we worry about that. And I remember how numb I was now. I thought it hit me. I thought two buildings, one airplane in Pennsylvania, one airplane missing the Pentagon, except for a, a chunk of it. And it, our world stood still. And it totally made me numb. Can you imagine if two whole cities, Chicago and New York both, had been nuked? And millions of people dead instead of thousands. Then you go here. The people who are here at this time your whole stinking world. Not just two cities. There ain't a city on the planet and it hasn't crumbled by the end of the tribulation period. One of the steel, one of the sealed judgments. One of the sealed judgments. 25% of the world's population will die. One sealed judgment. Right now that would be one and a half billion ba ba billion people. We cannot even fathom this. Can't even imagine. And that tells me two things. Number one, I'm not going to be here. I'm glad I'm saved and I'm not going to be here. And number two, people who say the church is going through this, they have no common sense. They have no common sense. You cannot tell me that God saved us to then pour out His wrath on us when one seal, there's seven seals, folks, and one of them's going to wipe out 1.5 billion people. That isn't for a church. But if you're not saved, it's for you. That's our message to the unsaved. You you don't you don't think you're going to drop dead the next minute? You think you've got five minutes left in your life? You're gambling. <laughs> Mama needs a new dress. That's what you're doing with your life, right there. Just some crap shooting. Risking going to hell for eternity like that. Well, let's say you do it. And the rapture takes place. This is your future. And the only way for you to be saved is to not take the mark. And if you get caught, to willingly let them cut your head off and refuse to take the mark. By chance, well, you know, for lack of a better term, God will uh, see to it that some people will survive, but don't count on it. Don't count on being one of those people that do survive. I mean, this is heavy stuff. And I think Mer Americans, these these guys that are all, you know, attacking the free trip people and everything, they have just become so uh, spoiled, and they don't even read what it actually says about the tribulation. They don't take it seriously. They don't really take it literally. They don't give it any thought. They don't understand it. If you understood what this tribulation is all about, you wouldn't think for a minute God would let His church go through this. And we all need to watch that. Don't just read the Bible. Just don't read it. Live it. This book is alive. But you have to believe it. And you have to read it. And study it. Understanding it's God's Word. Really taking it seriously. If not then you can read it all you want and it's not going to make much difference.
it just goes 